My name is Joanna Smart and I am the 2019 Australasian Rolex Scholar of the Our World Underwater Scholarship Society. I have been given the incredible opportunity to travel, to learn, to explore and to change our world underwater. Through my scholarship, I aim to explore innovation, exploration and the relationship between communities and the marine environment. I want to explore the question of what do we want the oceans to look like in 20 years and what do we need to do now to get there. This is my journey so far. My scholarship year began in Fiji, where I was invited to join Bengo Adventure Divers and learn about their shark conservation program. Through their shark dive, they aim to educate guests about the threats and pressures sharks face in the modern world. The team have implemented the Shark Reef Marine Reserve, the first marine reserve dedicated to researching and preserving the local shark populations in Fiji. From Fiji, I headed to Lady Elliot Island on the Great Barrier Reef where I joined photographers David Dubelet and Jennifer Hayes on assignment for National Geographic. My name is Jen Hayes, this is David Dubelet, we're on assignment for National Geographic. We're on Lady Elliot Island on the Great Barrier Reef as part of a story called Coral Status, Science and Solutions funded by a National Geographic grant. We've been able to host Joanna Smart with Rolex. David, why are we here? Lady Elliot Island is the southernmost of all the Great Barrier Reef islands and coral reefs. It is a success story. The coral here is alive. It is populated by extraordinary creatures such as mantas and turtles. Uh, it is a place that is closest to the barrier reef which you literally can fly to. From David and Jennifer, I learnt that documenting and communicating what goes on below the surface is an art form. It requires an understanding of the environment and the creative ability to not just state facts, but to also tell a story. Joining National Geographic on assignment was a dream come true, and I feel privileged to have spent time with true masters of their craft. After Lady Elliot, I headed north where I joined Australasian Vice President Jane Jenkins to travel to some of the most remote and untouched parts of Papua New Guinea on board MV Oceania. Over 10 days, we undertook 27 dives at 20 different dive sites. This trip resulted in some of the most spectacular diving I have ever experienced. I was able to witness biodiversity at its finest and practice my underwater photography skills in the process. I was also fortunate enough to be hosted by the wonderful Max and Cecily Benjamin at Walindi Resort, where I was able to learn about their Mahoney and Nadari conservation program. The program offers hands-on reef and marine education to local school children, as well as facilities for visiting scientists. Since Mahoney has started, its programs have reached more than 150,000 students and teachers, local communities and other organisations. It was then time to head back to cooler waters where I was invited upon the Rodney Fox Great White Shark Expedition vessel out of Port Lincoln, South Australia. Whilst on board, I was given a crash course in white shark behaviour, ecology and conservation. I also saw my first ever Great White Shark. White Shark conservation and Rodney Fox expeditions are intrinsically linked with research forming a core part of their business. The team have made significant contributions including satellite tagging, biopsy sampling and photo identification. I then headed back to Sydney where I undertook an underwater videography course with Peter Lightaller of Down Under Aquatic Imaging. Peter taught me the fundamentals of underwater video and also taught me how to use a red cinema camera in a Gates underwater housing. 
Next, it was time to improve my diving skills with a GUE Fundamentals course with the wonderful instructors at Dive Centre Bondi. This course focused on refining my trim and buoyancy and I really enjoyed learning how to dive with twin tanks. It was then time to pack my bags and make the long journey to Oban, Scotland, where I joined Tritonia Scientific. Tritonia is a scientific diving agency, hyperbaric therapy provider and research centre. They have a global reputation for using innovative methods to support underwater exploration. My first task at Tritonia was to learn how to make a three-dimensional model of an underwater object. This technique involves photographing an object from many different angles and then using computer software to convert those images into a 3D model. I was then able to assist on a variety of different projects including blue carbon research, biochemistry and environmental impact assessments. It was amazing to see a team that fully integrates so many different areas of research, skill sets and operations. I have never come across a business who offered so many different services and conducted them with such joy and enthusiasm. I then swapped the rugged highlands of Scotland for the beautiful coastline of the Italian Riviera, where I joined one of the most unique projects I have ever come across. The Nemo's Garden Project was founded by Sergio Gambarini, the Managing Director of Ocean Reef. The aim of this project is to create an alternative system of agriculture that can be implemented in areas where land agriculture is not possible. The systems are self-sufficient, generate their own fresh water and utilise solar and wind power. Whilst in Italy, I was able to participate in the day-to-day -day running of Nemo's garden. I also provided an ecological assessment of the site, indicating how the structure was acting as an artificial reef, providing habitat and refuge for over 40 different species. The team has done an amazing job combining technology, science and engineering to create a truly innovative project. For me, Nemo's garden perfectly represents what is possible with a dose of creativity, ingenuity and passion. After Italy, I headed back to cold waters where I joined the team at Ocean Rainforest in the Faroe Islands for a lesson in seaweed farming. By volume, seaweeds are one of the most harvested aquaculture species on earth. They have a variety of uses, including foods, pharmaceuticals, and as fertilizers and biofuels. Seaweeds also uptake and store carbon dioxide, provide habitat for fish and invertebrates, oxygenate the water, and can uptake excess nutrients. Oliver Gregerson and his team at Ocean Rainforest have an innovative approach to seaweed cultivation. Their business seeds, grows, harvests, and processes their own seaweeds. They also participate in a variety of innovative research, including the development of offshore farming. Whilst aquaculture might not be the most glamorous of fields, I truly believe seaweeds are underrated. Ensuring the sustainable development of aquaculture is one of the most valuable things we can do to ensure a positive future for our oceans. My time at Ocean Rainforest was a great lesson in how research, innovation and business can combine to develop a sustainable economy. My time so far as the 2019 Australasian Rolex Scholar has been incredible. I cannot thank my sponsors and hosts enough for the amazing opportunities that have come my way. My last six months have already greatly changed the way I view our oceans. The people I have met, the projects I have worked with and the places I have seen have all sparked a feeling of optimism. More than anything, this year so far has shown me how many people care about our world underwater. So many people I have met are actively working to ensure the ocean is looked after, sustainably utilised and appreciated. In the next six months, I plan to continue to learn from people who are pushing the boundaries of what is possible. I would like to participate in more scuba training, continue to learn about underwater storytelling, 
and work with more organisations who are at the forefront of marine innovation and technology. Never has there been a time in history where stories of destruction, species extinction and habitat loss have left us feeling more helpless. However, moving forward in my scholarship year, I want to explore a different future, one where action, creativity, ingenuity and innovation can solve some of our most pressing problems.